Hello, welcome to the Linux Lads. This is the podcast you have been waiting for. Um, as usual, I am Shane. I'm Connor. And I'm Mike. And we have uh, a nice little show for you today. Um, it's late on a Friday and we're all we're all a bit wired, so bear with us through these technical difficulties. Um, first up, Mike, uh, what's been going on with you? Oh, well, since we had Michael Tunnel, uh, La- Tunnel, sorry, uh, since we had Michael Tunnel on last uh, last episode, I was trying KDE, and uh, yeah, I'm I'm quite happy with it. Uh, I use KDE on OpenSUSE Tumbleweed on my laptop, and then I tried OpenSUSE on my desktop. It didn't work out. There were some problems with the X server, so. Uh, and not actually my desktop, my work desktop. So I installed Kubuntu today on the work work uh, desktop, and everything seems to be fine. I'm all in on Plasma again. That's that's a brave step, Kubuntu on the the work computer. Um, interesting. Yeah, I did say last time to Michael that I was gonna try try out Kubuntu and see how I liked it. But uh, yeah, I never did that in the end. <laughs> and I'm going away to the states tomorrow for a week, so I definitely. Won't get a chance then either. Um, so, before we get into the news, um, we have a coupon code for Azure VPN. It's a coupon code for 30% off when you pay for three months of Azure VPN. They're a security focused VPN provider based in Sweden where the law doesn't require them to log traffic. They operate servers in Europe and North America. Their servers are owned and not rented, they're installed on location by their engineers and running Debian Linux. They provide a WireGuard and OpenVPN option. Their client is GPL version 2 licensed and it's available on Linux. They take all major pay- payment methods, including crypto. Also, you don't even have to give them an email address. So use the code LinuxLads when you're ordering and make sure to add the green, click the green add code button to get the discount. And that's valid until 1st of January 2020. So, news time. Uh, Matrix and Blender, two very worthwhile projects in my opinion, get paid. So apparently Matrix received eight and a half million from investors. NVIDIA joins the Blender Development Fund on the patron level, which is $120,000 a year or more. So uh, that's great news. Uh, Mike, uh, what do you think about this? Well, I think it just proves that uh, Blender and Matrix are uh, things that uh, not only as hobbyists, but also professional people really need, especially Blender. It's been known about Blender that uh, it's the, tool of choice of many professional studios and matrix just highlights the like the the investment in matrix in my opinion just highlights the need for uh, secure and uh, secure communication that companies can uh, companies and users can control Uh, you know something private something uh, well uh, uh, technically well designed. I think they mentioned on their blog that they received that eight point five million dollars uh, to uh, to basically polish the product. So, which is a good news. I mean, if if uh, and when uh, this is very uh, very much a user a user level product, I'm sure the adoption will get even higher. Although I think that they mentioned somewhere that they have something like eight uh, eleven million installs from from Matrix. So. Yeah, it just shows that both of those tools are uh, very much uh, desired by not only hobbyists, by professional uh, professionals as, as well. Yeah, it's great to see the, the, the more grassroots open source projects getting interest uh, and getting that kind of money. I mean, obviously not anywhere near approaching the levels of the big boys, but it's a great platform to to jump from for, for this kind of open source software. It's... Uh, you know that this we mightn't see the benefits of this for a few years, but it's uh, it's still good news. Uh, Connor, uh, do you you've used Matrix, haven't you? I've used used Matrix very briefly in the past, um, and I've used is it um, uh, oh, I forget the the name of the app, but the app that is in the uh, Matrix chat for um, Android. Uh, is Riot sorry Riot dot I M, um is the 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 app that you in the, they have a desktop app and they they've um, a mobile app as well, um and I it's a very compelling platform um, 
it, it was a bit janky UI wise for in my taste previously, but the last Og Camp there was a, there was a um a sneak preview of the redesign, and I was I was almost freaking st- doing a standing ovation after the talk because I found it quite compelling the 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 new UI design and there's there I think they've been slowly starting to roll that out since it's a very compelling platform um it's it's completely naturally uh free and open source and free in in every sense of the word I mean I believe it can be self-hosted as well it's 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 a slack alternative it's a it's a telegram alternative it's a a discord or google hangouts alternative it's kind of all rolled into one so it's definitely if if this is getting financial backing and is is getting a bit of spit and polish i'm i'm all for it i mean if if this this app is a very compelling platform then i mean we we are on on telegram ourselves and telegram is very good um not nothing against telegram per se but telegram the client side is open source but the server side is a uh, closed source so if we want to be 100% open source ourselves um matrix could be a viable alternative so i i definitely will keep be keeping an eye on matrix to see who knows we might switch i'm not saying <laughs> tomorrow or anything but in sometime in the future we might switch away from um telegram to to matrix if matrix becomes um uh, compelling and is a viable alternative to up to the same standard or even close to the same standard yeah I, yeah have to agree i think we could uh possibly i can f- see our chat to be uh synced between the two of two platforms because whilst i see the you know the the, the advantages of matrix and i'm all for self-hosted and i like the idea and the project I also see that the ease of use of a hosted project like Telegram, which is just there, you just need to install it, it works across devices, across platforms. It's uh, it's so easy to use that it makes, it helps communities grow, you know, and that's, that's a valid aspect, even if it's not completely open source, the fact that it connects people is important and... Uh, I think, but I can see why there are people who wouldn't use it. So in order to satisfy everybody, I think we could uh, merge them. I've tried it before and it didn't work out. Maybe the te- I hope, hopefully the technology evolved. So one day we will have both Matrix and uh, Telegram and everybody can connect. That's, yeah. a, that's a very valid point that Mike made. Um is matrix is all well and good but if there is an additional step I mean um if it's oh set up a username and password also once you install the the matrix app you have to type in this server address in order to or this chat channel or whatever in order to find us um rather than just using a search bar and just typing in Linux lads and then uh, in your app and then finding us or finding or following a link which we currently have on our website for Telegram. Um, Telegram does have the lower barrier barrier to entry for non tech savvy users, which is is it's there's no sense in putting up barriers in front of non tech savvy users. I mean, t- Telegram. Any time that I've explained Telegram to people, it's as easy to install as WhatsApp. As in, you install this application, it might ask you a couple of questions like what's your phone number or whatever, then you're done and then you open up a search box and says, uh, what what group do you want to join? What channel do you want to join? Search and it's there. Whereas Telegram, because there's federalization, because there's self-hosted nature of it, it could be the case of when you open up your application and you search it will say no results and you're like hey what the hell guys um, t- Linux as you said you were on Matrix and I'm not seem to finding you when I search then you get an, an email and we're like oh uh, well that's because you have to type in this specific thing or you have to follow this specific URL then you will find us It's it, that extra level is not very user intuitive yeah yeah um up next in the news, uh, RMS says there will be no major changes to GNU. Um, so this is the quote. Uh, as chief GNUsense, 
<laughs> I'd like to reassure the community that there won't be any radical changes in the GNU project's goals, principles and policies. I would like to make incremental changes in how some decisions are made, but I won't be here forever and we need to be ready or we need to ready others to make GNU project decisions when I can no longer do so. But these won't lead to unbounded or radical changes. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think I've kind of I'm all RMS'd out over even just the last story that we talked about. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't... This is kind of non-news for me, I guess. Uh, the, well, the good news that I can see is that uh, RMS uh, realizes that he won't be here forever. That means that he probably doesn't think he's a god, so that's a good... Uh, uh, <laughs> that's, that's a good surprise there. Yeah. Um... <laughs> But uh, oh, interestingly enough, though the, the the a lot of devs from the various GNU projects signed a statement asking for his resignation, um, which is interesting. Um, I haven't read that statement, but but that is that is curious. Um, I think the statement basically says, "Well, thanks for all you did. We really appreciate it. Uh, you've been great help uh, to 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 free software, but uh, it's time for the dinosaur to move on." And that's me paraphrasing. Obviously, they didn't say that they were very appreciative and professional. But it's a lot of people who help, who who a lot of developers from the GNU uh, project uh, or through projects that are within the GNU umbrella just uh, have the feeling that uh, there's been enough of RMS. Yeah, absolutely. Um, up next, uh, System76 launches two laptops with Coreboot. Uh, so for those who don't know, Coreboot is uh, an open architecture for uh, similar to uh, the the BIOS. Yeah, it's kind of an op Did I open, get that wrong? open BIOS or open source BIOS. It's yeah, open firmware for uh, for computers. Uh, for some level of open, obviously there are still the binary blobs in there uh, f because Intel chips just work that way. They need the uh, firmware support package and uh, I think the management engine as well. But uh, yeah, this is good because uh, major Linux manufacturer. Uh, makers of beautiful hardware also not only propagate the uh, you know the beauty and the slickness of their hardware but also go the open source route which is very important i can't wait for the moment when we have fully open source hardware uh, which so this is a giant step in a great direction in the correct direction yeah so yeah system 76 or uh, i've seen some of their laptops they look really nice so be really cool if you could have like the the full stack be open um someday someday um next up we've got <laughs> i don't think this is uh this is something that would surprise me because i never really thought he did dislike it but uh, linus is not anti microsoft so uh, linus torvalds described ms as friendly and happy to work with linux um lately i mean i can't disagree i mean microsoft have definitely extended some olive branches. Um, so, yeah, I, 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 I don't know. Uh, but I guess everyone thought that being Linus, he had a, some sort of an opinion. I just, uh, I don't know. I think when we think back to the Microsoft of uh, Balmer's years, to me, that is the aberration. They weren't, you know, with calling, calling everybody bad names and trying to, trying to, basically ramp up crowds against something with with bile i don't think they were behaving like a proper company back then they were like a rogue you know rogue element now when they when they say they hard linux i don't think they mean it either i mean they are a company a company cannot love anything it's it's nonsense but they finally started to behave commercially you know so Linux is a great product. It enables them to do a lot of stuff on Azure. That's why uh, they work with it. And that's, you know, that's the only relationship we can ever expect from them. And the fact that they don't have a clown in the front who calls us a cancer, that is how the things should be. And, you know, Linux, Linux's re response is also uh, the way it should be. Uh, you know, they, they, these are... Pro projects and products that work together uh, and uh, professionalism is the way things are and should be yeah. 
exactly yeah I, i've always had this disdain for the the kind of this uh there's a there's a, a real streak of immature tribalism in in the open source world and the linux world especially um you know uh, as we call it distro elitism or you know distroist distroist <laughs> so uh yeah I've, I've never i've never really appreciated that kind of thing um you know it's just a company it's a software it's not it's not really worth getting upset about uh connor yeah i uh, no i was going to do um a play on the whole um bomber and re- like uh, the positive thing about bomber it was, it was all about developers 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 <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah now uh to echo shane's point the the um elitism that you would get amongst a, a minority but a very vocal minority in the linux community is um yeah it's it's quite it can be quite annoying i mean who cares if you run arch if you run ubuntu if you run fedora or whatever run the tool that that um that suits you run run the workflow that you suits you doesn't matter if you run kd if you run gnome if you run cinnamon xfc run the or i3 uh run the the uh workflow that suits you um it's all that's the beauty by linux is it's all tailored you you make it what you want it to make to to make of it um whatever makes you comfortable and the whole thing of <laughs> excuse me guys i i run the art the proper way and i did it through uh, through the, like using the art wiki and anyone else anyone else who doesn't do that is inferior like i i'm totally <laughs> not really parroting that for deliberate comedic effect but that whole attitude of oh i'm a proper linux user because i was able to follow the arch user gu- user guide and, or the arch install guide and was able to start set arch up the proper way and anyone else who doesn't do that oh uh, ubuntu users you're just you're just casual linux users yeah f- fuck right <laughs> <laughs> I I I do agree. I mean, everybody has got the same rights as long as they all use a Vim. As long as they are all using Vim, <laughs> everybody's doing it the correct way. No surprises there. Uh, no, not really. No, I'm using OpenSUSE right now on this laptop. But uh, you know, Vim on anything. Vim on Vim on oh. a cheese grater. Great. <laughs> Uh, last bit of news uh, before our discussion. Um, Facebook's Libra has an open source competition, so uh, or has an open source competitor, I should say. Um, open Libra, that's unimaginative, <laughs> is a technology platform and currency for financial inclusion. It says an alternative to Facebook's Libra that places emphasis on open governance and economic decentralization. What I'm wondering actually is, is this is Open Libra? Uh, is it the open source version of the actual Libra project? Is it like maintained by the Libra project? And it's just the open source uh, community version or whatever, or is it actually a just an independent project? Because if it's an independent project, which I suspect it is, I haven't checked it out yet. But that 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 that's like that they they could have picked a better name. I mean, they just opened Libra. I know it's petty, but still. No, I think they want to kind of um, pull themselves pull themselves up on the Libra name. So uh, it's a you know the the Libra the Facebook's Libra is problematic. It's problematic for individuals and it's problematic for the other companies. And like recently, the project Facebook's project was uh, like PayPal, who was included in it, has left and. Uh, there are problems from the side of, uh, for example, the Bank of England. Uh, uh, let the, let everybody know that uh, they will be looking at it with very strict eyes uh, if it if they even let it exist in England. And uh, the the problem is with Facebook. They don't exactly have a reputation for uh, being inclusive or. Uh, you know, uh, privacy conscious uh, or anything that you would want from a good steward of a currency. So Open Libra, I think the project, it is an independent project, but I think they want to say we are doing what Facebook says they are doing, you know? So we are the 
Mm. And uh, I understand why they chose the name because, uh, you know, if you call yourself uh, something else, non-related, it won't be immediately obvious what you are trying to do. Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously, even just uh, personally, I, I don't think either project is going to be successful just on a hunch because I think this type of thing needs a few more years before it will become something that people actually use in their daily lives. I think that still has a few years to go, to go, you know? Um, so open Libra, I mean, but don't like, that's, you know, the devil on my shoulder saying that on the other hand, it's great because we need open everything They're all then for whatever service platform software we're using. We always need to have an open one. Like that's, that's a must for me. So it's it's great to see an open response to everything, you know. Um, it's good to see that people still give a shit enough to actually go out there and develop this stuff and spend their time on it often, you know, for free. So um, yeah, it's it's always good news. Yeah, I can I can only echo uh, echo Shane's points there. Um, I was I was just thinking as you guys were discussing it, is it's if anything it just it puts peace of mind in let's say if, if uh, both of these are going to be um, vying as as uh, both are being or vying for people's attention and both are, are both viable uh, as in one is not just dead in, in the in the water as soon as it's launched um it, i.e. the open ver the open version of it because it's it's smaller it doesn't have as much funding it doesn't have the corporate backing as much as as the other guys do with their their mastercards and their facebook and their whatever whatever but that could could possibly turn people away from the i'm not not in any way saying that the the um the official libra the difference between that and the open libra um is being any way nefarious it's just that doubt in people's mind of oh it was found it was founded by facebook sure there's it's it's being run by um a conglomeration of all these other companies such as mastercard visa blah 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 as well as facebook but the very fact that it was founded by facebook you're saying surely there's some sort of tracking going on here in the background it's facebook there has to be it's facebook the the very fact that it, the open yeah. Libra is, is just saying, okay, the, our our egos are completely and utterly taken aside here. It's open source. You can vet the code if you want. Blah blah blah. That that whole thing of guys, we're being honest. And if you don't believe us, there 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 it is out in the open. You can check that we're being honest. That will uh, gain more support within the the Linux and open source community. But, but uh, I don't know if if it's if unfortunately I don't know if it's viable and as a commercial entity and will be able to be taken off the ground. It could be the case of there are many um an, an open source project that it literally takes them a decade to get up and running, um in which case I will wish them all the the um the will the goodwill in the world if they survive that long if that is the case. But it might be tough for them for the first couple of years. I think uh, the the problem with big tech and these big tech projects uh, that get so large is that uh, you mentioned that they said you said that you don't think there's anything necessarily nefarious going on with Libra, but I don't think so either. I mean, I don't think Zuckerberg is a, a bad person. I just think he has he lives in a different. He lives in a bit of a bubble, and he doesn't understand the full impact of his actions. Um, and no matter how much he reads or sees or whatever, he's not probably not going to. But he's a smart guy, but he's almost too smart for his own good. Um, so what I think the problem is, is that these projects, they just their goals and their objectives run counter to what's good for most people at the end of the day. I think they're just on two intersecting paths that just don't play well with each other you know a company can't get larger and more powerful and have more data more money more everything it just it's completely unsustainable you need more people to use it which means more people on the planet which means fucking the planet up even more and then it, like you, you could go you could extrapolate it that far but that's ridiculous but um 
but yeah, it, it's just like how much can Facebook really do? I mean, they've over a billion active users. They have you know vast sums of money. You know that they, they can influence all sorts of things in the world, politically, socially, economically. Like, where does it end? Like, we need an open version of everything. And in my mind, Libra just shouldn't exist. I, I, like, it's a step too far, you know? Well, there is definitely an argument uh, against gross ownership of everything. Like, if you are running an advertising agency, you shouldn't be allowed to have a web search. If you are having a social network, you shouldn't be allowed to have a currency. If you are running a currency, you shouldn't be allowed to have an advertising agency, you know, you should not be allowed to cross own services uh, and be able to lock people in your kind of little realm. Uh, so, but then that's theory and that's what should happen. But in in reality, everyone, every single one of these companies is trying in a way to uh, basically lock people in their own stuff. You know, Facebook does it in some parts of the world. They are the internet you know for people uh now they are trying and that's the same part of the world which is uh, which doesn't have much access to banking services so as far as i understand it libra was not meant really for this part of the world it was meant for let's say uh some apec countries uh you know asia uh, pacific australia not, not australia but basically you know some asian countries maybe african countries where uh, ser banking services are not uh, as developed as they are here and uh, facebook is widespread even on uh, not like not completely smartphones you can still get facebook you can use facebook messenger and if they uh, managed to get into people's wallets as well uh, they'd have everything they'd have communication uh they and they their financial services they could probably create marketplace as well because i know it exists like facebook has its own marketplace so you could basically become the service industry for inter communities and it's it's very scary it's, yeah it's far too much power i mean it it doesn't like for me the argument is a complete non-starter for anyone who argues against what i'm saying it, it it just it has to happen it, the, these these companies are far far too large um and it's i don't know i could talk for days about this but like so <laughs> i think i'll cut it off and well, cut it off there basically what you're saying saying is war in 2020 yeah oh well yes <laughs> well i am i guess yeah um yeah i know we i know we we don't we don't make our quote unquote liberal bias uh you know we don't make it uh very minimal on this podcast or very invisible so uh you know but uh yes <laughs> so i think that's it for the news so we shall move on to the events so we've got one big one um and one also big one <laughs> i admit i thought there was only one for just a sec but uh og camp is on next weekend in manchester and because i'm going to the fucking states which is well well i say the fucking states but i'm excited to go it's going to be great but um uh means i couldn't go to og camp because it's next weekend uh not this coming weekend the one after just to be clear um what date would that be the 19th it is the 19th and 20th of October. Yeah, 19th and 20th in Manchester. So, uh, Og Camp is always great. Like we've been, we've all been several times, and it's just, yeah, it's just, be it's the best, really. It's, it's probably all of, I assume, all of our number one uh, Linux and FOSS type events. Um, we meet so many people there. We like that's that's the community is the heart of the community as far as we're concerned in this part of the world, anyway. Um, but yeah, you guys are going, I'm not, as due to aforementioned stateside travels, which is kind of a bummer, but, you know, it's a, it's bittersweet, I guess. Yeah, you'll still get to go over to uh, Seattle and look at all the beautiful architecture when you're in Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it does have nice architecture. I oh, know, that, that I was being... <laughs> facetious and serious. <laughs> I do. I have heard that it has very uh, 
nice architecture. And one thing yeah. that um, I believe, and this is the complete and utter um, engineering nerd coming out, I believe there's a some kind of aerospace museum and it has an SR-71 Blackbird uh, in it. So I'm very jealous of that, even if you don't get to see it <laughs> any time that I'm going to be near Seattle. I, that's one of my things that I want to visit. Is that where Boeing's from? By the way, that's right. Yeah, they they have a they have a headquarters there, and yeah, also, I kind of want to see that. There's a flight museum there that I want to see. Yeah, just make sure nothing falls on your head. They don't hold in the air these days. <laughs> uh, there's, yeah, so there's no <laughs> there's no what's the the seven three seven Max or something was it? Mm-hmm. The one that kept yeah. falling out of the sky. Um, once once you're in Seattle, don't forget to check out the check out the. Uh, giant spliff, I mean space needle in the middle of the city. <laughs> that was definitely done, like definitely done. But uh, yeah, but yes, that's that's right. It is an estate that has recreational. <laughs> um, we will we will keep that vague. It's it's four twenty friendly. Yeah, yeah. We don't we don't know who are we don't know who's listening. <laughs> also, yeah. Well, uh, there, so. If if you are from DTSA, <laughs> uh, anyway. <laughs> They they also there's that's also where Microsoft uh, Amazon are that's based. Right. Are and Redmond Redmond yeah. is only a few hours away. Yeah. Um, but anyway, and on, uh, Bellingham, Washington, where uh, Chris Fisher and all of them are in the the Jupiter Broadcasting crew. Well, maybe I should look them up. Maybe I should see see if there's any uh, see if there's a Linux community in in Seattle. Watch this space, Seattle. Um, if we have any listeners there, that'd be really cool if we did actually. Um, yeah. So do actually reach out if you're if you want to meet up with Shane. No, I don't. <laughs> 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 I'm a very antisocial person. Don't do that. Um, no, that's a lie. Do. Um, so uh, events. Uh, we're still on events. We've got the Clear Linux talk in Dublin, um, and that's important because it's hosted by us. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so that's uh, November second, twenty nineteen, uh, in the Harcourt Hotel, isn't that right, Connor? Yeah. So it's in the Harcourt Hotel. Uh, we have booked the venue from three p.m. The talk should be starting at three uh, thirty p.m. So uh, do try to be punctual if you are. So that's the reason why I said the event is starting at three p.m. Try and get people in the door before the event, the talk actually starts. Um, and we have a function room, and there also the bar has been booked afterwards. So even if you don't manage to squeeze in the back for the t- actual talk itself, um, then you can always just meet up with us in the bar. And Rodrigo, the speaker, is is an easygoing guy. I've talked to him. Um, before um so he'll probably be hanging out with us in the bars afterwards as well yeah so uh yeah intel kindly agreed to send someone out to give us a talk on the clear linux distribution um since intel are based uh fairly near dublin it made sense um so if you're in the dublin area we also want to shout out that uh we will have the venue for a few hours so we're actually doing a call for a call out for lightning talks of about like 10 15 minutes each so um if you want if you're interested in doing that and you live in the Dublin area, just shout us out on info at dublinlinux.org. So uh, be sure to use that so it goes to the right email. Um not the Linux lads one. Uh so uh, info at Dublin Linux Dublin Linux dot org. Um now on to our discussion. Um this should be an interesting one. Um what we're discussing today is what projects would we give money to if we won the Euro Millions? So just a quick one for the US listeners, the Euro Millions is like the Powerball or something, whatever it is. It's basically like a, a big massive lottery across all of Europe and you can win insane jackpots. Like the last one was 190 million euro. So it's, uh, yeah, it's a pretty significant amount of money. So uh, we thought we would all, if we won that amount of money, we thought what what projects would we give some money to what projects would we don't would we donate to um so we thought that could be interesting uh there is some overlap i see uh mike i'm going to start with you why don't you take us through your list okay well firstly i'd buy a windows license and <laughs> no uh basically i would uh i would give money to 
uh, visit data, which is my favorite uh, spreadsheet uh, application. It's a command line spreadsheet that's blazingly f blazing fast. And uh, I'm already supporting them on Patreon, not with Euro Millions kind of cash, obviously. Uh, but uh, it's, a sm it's a small project and that, that helps me massively in my job. So I'm, you know, uh, so I'm really grateful. And if I had that kind of money, I'd uh, donate. I'd definitely donate to them uh, more. And uh, yeah, I'm just looking at it and I forgot one there. So uh, I'm going to go quickly through the list because, uh, you know, I, I'm thinking I have made pretty obvious choices. Vim for uh, for uh, obvious reasons. Although I think that Vim, uh, the, the the day when they receive a donation, it actually goes to uh, children in Ghana. I think they they uh, because the the founder Bram Molinar has got some ties in there. I think he he goes there and he supports the local community. So uh, I'm don't exact. I should know the story, and I don't really don't really. But uh, that that's another project. Uh, LibreOffice. Uh, I've seen there are man, many other Office, or not many other, but there are some other Office used for Linux, and they are good for uh, some purpose. Like for example, Free Office is really good uh, for cross compatibility cr cr for, for compatibility with uh, Microsoft Office. And there are some other ones that have got other good uses, but uh, uh, LibreOffice is like the Linux uh, Office Suite, as far as I'm concerned, it does everything. It does it reasonably well. But if you compare it to uh, Microsoft Office, for example, you can see that there are certain polish that could be done. It could be a bit faster. It could uh, open more rows in Excel and so on. So I think that's a project definitely. And the whole Document Foundation and their ethos of, uh, you know, open documents and uh, accessible no, accessible uh, accessible documents this needs supporting by the same token mozilla because in my opinion they do the best browser in the world and they are a great project when it comes to defending net neutrality open standards and uh, all sorts of other activism kde because uh, as uh, michael uh, mentioned uh, last time, they you know they could do with the res extra resources uh, to maybe improve usability. Even though they are focusing a lot on usability lately, they've been doing that. But uh, they they could always do with more, and I think that's a fantastic project. And uh, you know, it's uh, it's uh, the one of the two most. Uh, one or one, maybe one of the two or three or uh, most uh, important desktop environments. Uh, Nextcloud, because I think and that we need uh, self-hosted f open source uh, uh, alternatives to Google Drive and uh, all the other Google services. OpenStreetMap for the same reason. And uh, something that doesn't exist, but I've heard it tossed around on another podcast. I think Jensen Evangel mentions it and uh, uh, Rocco on Destination Linux mentioned the need for it, basically an organization that would do marketing for Linux, which is something we don't have. Oh, God, yes. <laughs> but, you know, something something that's basically put the YouTubes, you, you put the YouTube videos up, uh, put the posters up, you know, do, do the kind of uh, slick marketing campaigns that we are lacking to show the best Linux has to offer, to attract people who would never think about... Uh, uh, using a different operating system uh, and to shake off the kind of do-it-yourself uh, hobbyist uh, uh, aura that we don't aura, but you know the, the the reputation that we still seem to have that we, that Linux is really difficult and that you have to be technical and that you have to uh, that you have to just that you have to just put a lot of work into making it work it's not it's no longer true but we need somebody to say it for us someone who has got a professionalism someone who knows how marketing campaigns are done and if there was such a uh, such a effort i would uh, definitely even without winning euro, euro millions i would uh, support it yeah absolutely um have to agree with the last one big time um connor uh take us through your list so the those these are in no particular order or no um particular importance um 
Video LAN is my first one. So their most famous product is VLC. It is a solid as a rock video player, media player. You can throw anything at it. Um, it will play it. I remember back in the day when we all had those um, uh, old school candy bar style uh, phones. Mine was a, a Sony Ericsson. Uh, and record on this weird friggin' video format, three GP or some weird. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. Weird <laughs> shit. Nothing would play it, but plug in your your phone into your computer and open up, uh, uh open it up with uh, VLC and videos. VLC will will work with it. Back in the time, I was using, I was I was on Windows, so back in the time, yeah, Windows Media Player was like, huh, and then just VLC work straight away. Um, so. But VideoLAN do a lot of codec work themselves, and I believe they have their own uh, video editing um, software, but I don't know how popular it is, and I don't know how it intuitive, it, it, intuitive it is to use, but I believe they do have their own video editing software. So they for, and so for those reasons, I would support VideoLAN. Um, probably one of the biggest on my list in terms of of it being deserved is wine wine is such a fucking genius piece of software because what it is is a compatible well i'm sure I'm, the technical people are probably going to correct my terminology here but i would describe it as a compatibility layer uh that allows you to execute uh windows programs on on your computer and I've heard things like uh, Microsoft Office uh, 2007 or Microsoft Office 2010. Uh, I don't know about anything newer than that. But uh, um, games, your old games that you uh, thought were long since gone, since you switched over to Linux, um, Wine will be able to run it. And there's a lot of things that have been based up upon Wine. I mean... Um, plays on linux uh uh is a piece of software and that uses wine in the back end there is uh lutris lutris uses wine um the proton element of of uh steam now with valves steam valves proton that is using that is using wine so wine has been very long on the tooth wine has been around since for ages almost as long as linux has or has been and so very much a very good um very good project well deserved the funds there um friends of the show uh uh zorn os because they're um coming from irish people <laughs> well at least one irish person um or somebody based in ireland at least is uh artium zorn so uh i have they don't i looked on their website do they do not seem to have a donation link but they have a paid for ultimate version um so that is some way of of contributing to them financially so i put down the ultimate link there and um, zoran os is very sleek operating system uh, based on ubuntu but is very user friendly particularly for people who are switching over from windows um now the next two you could argue are very similar but one is is kind of a local and one is more of a broader over, overview is the EDRI is the European Digital Rights Initiative I believe um, and yeah, for, right. for the Americans it is the European equivalent of the EFF so it's a uh, digital rights advocacy um, group digital rights um, lobby group um for in europe and the local version is digital rights ireland so they're affiliated with edri but is digital rights ireland are the local version of that um because i suspected a lot of people would put this down and i didn't full disclosure i did not see other people's or the other two guys lists before this and was the document foundation was LibreOffice, so I put that down as well. Uh, but as a bonus, I put down Linux Mint because Linux Mint um, is well deserved, and they uh, they maintain Cinnamon, which is currently my favorite desktop environment. 
Yeah, can't can't disagree with anything there really. Um, uh, Video Land was an interesting one. Um, I didn't even think of that when I was putting it down, but it is a very important uh, project. Um, mine, uh, mine list is a bit shorter, and I went for a few more kind of uh, app kind of projects and you know smaller kind of things. Um, just to contrast with the, with all the big projects, um, I did have a couple of big ones, obviously. But uh, I started out with the Blender Foundation um, because Blender is just amazing, and it's a mind-bogglingly powerful piece of software. Um, I'm currently learning it. I'm probably scratching the surface, like two percent in. But you know, the the more you learn, the more you kind of, you know, becomes a little bit less frightening and then you start to imagine more possibilities and you're like, oh God, well, what else can I do? <laughs> so it, it, you kind of go down the rabbit hole with it uh, once you get over that initial, you know, fright of the UI. So Blender is a great piece of software, um, incredibly powerful, and I think the foundation should only go from strength to strength. Um, next up is, uh, it's a, actually a copy of Mike's, but I think it's worth mentioning twice, is um, Mozilla. For obvious reasons, I mean, they're the Mac Daddy, as far as I'm concerned. They, they really push, they push the the open and free software, and internet and open technology and the whole shebang. They they push that agenda like crazy, and they do it very honestly and very effectively, which I love. So, uh, so yeah, all, always donate to Mozilla. Um, Wikipedia is the next one, which. Um, I guess it, yeah, I guess that is an open source project because they do have a very permissive license on their software. The, the, the actual, uh, uh, what's the actual software that Wikipedia is based on? DocuWiki, I think it's called. It's, uh, that's open source software, I believe. So, um, but even just Wikipedia themselves, I mean, I know they, they're very annoying, they're very annoying when they, when they, uh, they're very annoying when they put all those ads on the screen saying, oh, please give us money, please give us two euro a month. But they, they do need it because it's always incredibly important in this day and age, especially to have independent, unbiased, you know, community owned sources of information. That's very important. Um, the next two are, are interesting. Uh, one, one tool I just found the other day and I just found it such an effortless, amazing piece of software that I just had to put it down here after using it once. Well, no, I have used it in the past. I, I, I reckon maybe twice, maybe, but, uh, it's simple screen recorder. So I tried to do, uh, a screencast of me editing this podcast actually. And, um, I tried with OBS. I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. I clicked to add a source. I, I added what I thought was my microphone, spoke, nothing happened, hit record, nothing happened, clicked screen, didn't pick up the screen properly, it kept flashing and going black and shit, and, you know, it, I spent like 5-10 minutes trying to get it to work and just, it wasn't happening, and then it crashed, so I was like, okay, fuck this, so uh, it just literally just like vanished off the screen, like that kind of crash, um, so probably like a major fucking seg fault or something. I don't know, but it was, uh, yeah, it was a bad experience. So <laughs> I went over to simple screen recorder and I was like cursing OBS. I was like, Whoa, why does everyone talk it up so much? It's, I've never had got it to work properly in my life. Um, simple screen recorder. I was recording my entire monitor. Uh, I could easily pick which screen I wanted to record and I didn't get any fucking mumbo jumbo of where it like starts recording both screens and then it starts recording a section of one screen like I got an OBS and I don't know why and <laughs> I don't know how to change what it's what screen it's recording and it, it was a nightmare but simple screen recorder was so easy it was a drop down menu screen one uh pick your resolution pick your you know the output format you know pick your audio device picks everything up first time and it, it's like a tutorial kind of wizard style menu. It's very interesting. Uh, I, I'd recommend giving it a shot if you ever need to need to do screen recordings. But uh, that's that's a great piece of software. I didn't actually see a donate link on the website, but I put down the link. Uh, the 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 developer has his own has the link on his own personal site. Um, so you can go check it out. Submit a feature request. File a bug. Maybe that'll help him. <laughs> um, the next one is uh, Godot Game Engine, 
Um, and I'm, this is a major one because it's a crazy powerful uh, game engine. It's it's not quite it's, it's not quite as feature complete as Unity or Unreal Engine or anything like that. But um, yeah, I don't I don't know. It's 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 just great to see a fully open source game engine. Um, you know, Unity would be the industry standard, would be a lot more powerful. But as I said earlier, we definitely need to have at least one alternative just in the open space for everything we have. So, you know, uh, it's all fine and well, you know, having freedom of software, freedom of information, you know, in the very ethical sense. But it's also good to have open ways to create art and entertainment as well. So that's something I feel very strongly about. So Godot is is a, a big one for me. I would just, uh, you know, we made it sound, definitely agree with all of your guys' choices. We just made it sound a bit negative on the OBS side. So I'd like to just say that I we actually record this on, uh, everybody records his own audio on Audacity, but for backup purposes and just because I can, I also record all of us and the video, the, basically my screen capture on OBS, and it has not let me down yet. So I think maybe like you had a, you know, uh, it was something wrong with that, with maybe with the setup or something, but OBS, I believe, is a fantastic piece of software. It's not for the likes of me, probably, uh, because it's too complicated, as you said. It does too many things. So if you just need to simply record your screen, then the simple screen recorder probably it would be better mm. but uh, for people who do a lot of like studio work i think and uh, who do complicated things with video i think obs is uh, is like one of the tools just like blender uh, that that should uh, they definitely uh, are on, on you know they they have got so many features and i think uh, i think that the obs uh, people are definitely not as uh, well supported by commercial entities as blender is i think obs maybe is a company i'm not sure actually i should know this as well but yeah i think they definitely also deserve our support yeah absolutely um yeah i didn't mean to shit on obs as a program it's just i, I just found that experience i had with it very frustrating um and you know especially after you hear so many positive things about it then when it just never gets off the starting block for you, you're kind of like, why? <laughs> what is, what is it? Is it me? Um, but uh, yeah. So yeah, nice varied list. And um, we're going to include all the links to those in the show notes. Um, so we definitely encourage you to, uh, to uh, go ahead and uh, donate to whatever project you like the sound of, um, or don't your money. Um uh, nice little segue, though. You could also donate to us. <laughs> <laughs> so, Smooth. So uh, linuxlads.com forward slash support. So uh, you can uh, you can support us there. Um, honestly, you should give your money to one of those other projects we mentioned. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, if, if you have a spare five euro after all of that, after you've donated but, yeah. to every single um, uh, project on our or all our lists and you've a spare for five yeah. euro after that then you can buy us a beer can, can for just the price of a cup of coffee a week <laughs> you can keep a, a podcaster in coffee <laughs> <laughs> oh wait oh yeah i see what i did there um, <laughs> um anyway so uh yeah linuxlads.com forward slash support um yeah, so we'd really appreciate that. Uh, obviously, it does cost a little bit of money to run the podcast, and you know, I would like a nicer microphone. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, enough of that. Uh, if you want to catch up with us, um, you can get us on Telegram. So we have the links on the website, and we will have them in the show notes also. So it'd be linuxlads dot com forward slash Telegram. Uh, you can get us uh, at linuxlads on Twitter, Facebook uh, forward slash linuxlads. Um, after the facebook.com obviously um, <laughs> and we're also on Mastodon um, I don't know that off by heart but I believe it's just linuxlads.com forward slash Mastodon and it will get you there um, and of course uh, snail mail or email whatever you want to call it these days is uh, show at linuxlads.com um, so that was it from us um, 
I've been Shane. I've been Connor. And I've been Mike. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Do 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 do